Hi guys, uh, ADC part 1, another explanation today. Uh, we are going to discuss about impacted canines. Uh, one of my candidates uh, requested me to make a video about it. So, and she shared uh, this question, which is from one of my mocks. Uh, so yeah, let's start with it. Uh, Dine, a 15-year-old girl, says she is concerned about the size of the baby upper eye teeth. Eye teeth or eye tooth is always canine. Okay. So she says the size of the baby upper eye tooth. So because she is 15, according to the eruption chart that we know of, almost all her teeth should have been erupted. But still her deciduous canine is there in the mouth and the new one is not there based on this picture. So, of course, the deciduous canine would be smaller in size compared to the other teeth. And hence, the girl is concerned. Understandable. Now, she is not bothered about the small space between the upper front teeth, which means this, this, and this. So, she has generalized spacing, basically. If the gap was present only between these two teeth, I would have just called it as a diastema. But because it's present out here also and here also, it's more of a spacing. Basically, she has a big mouth and the teeth size is a bit small. They're not that small. It's not microdontia. But, uh, you know, they are just average size teeth and she's got a little bigger jaw, which is resulting in spaces. But she's not bothered about it. So we should not be concerned about at the moment either. Now, she is not bothered about the small space between the upper front teeth. C is also slightly loose. C means this canine and this canine. And she's worried in case that it is lost, it would produce a big space. So she feels if this tooth is lost, there would be a very big space between this lateral and the premolar. Uh, quietly concerning because it forms the corner of your smile. So if you're going to smile and on both the sides, if you see big spaces, it's going to look weird. Her previous general dental practitioner who retired last year, advised her that these teeth would eventually fall out by themselves. Uh, the dental practitioner retired last year means she had gone to him last year, which means she was 14 at that time. And that when the new eye teeth come through, she would then need braces to close the spaces between her upper top teeth. So when the upper canines come up, uh, she will have all the adult dentition and she can go ahead with the braces to close the gaps in case she is willing for it. Now, there is no history of trauma to see. Uh, and all of the primary teeth were lost naturally. All permanent teeth have erupted on schedule. She has noticed that C has been loose intermittently for past 18 months. Now, 18 months is a very big time. See, first of all, the upper canines are supposed to erupt by the age of 12, 13, max 14. In case they are not erupting, then you should start investigating as to what is happening. Now, a tooth is being wobbly for past 18 months and still not falling off is a sign of a concern. Now, it does not appear to have got looser in recent months, means she doesn't feel it's going to fall off soon. Diane is very keen to improve the appearance of her upper teeth. So, she is very, very bothered about the look of her face the teeth wise and she wants to improve it so let's see what are the questions now before i see the questions uh first thing after reading this big scenario uh, it would come in my mind is where are the permanent canines you know are they present are they absent if present um, why is there there are no bulge in this areas for them is there a space deficiency because of which they cannot erupt no that is not true there is actually excess of space so if they are present then probably something is wrong with them because by now they should have come and if they are absent then we have to find out why they are absent as in are both of them absent either of them is absent and if they are present where are they so these are the questions in my mind and the first thing that i would tell my patient is to take an opg directly okay but anyways let's see what the question asks here what investigations would you undertake regarding the retained C? Wow, that is the first question indeed. Though I had not read it. <laughs> so, uh, radiographical examination first. CBCT, clinical examination to determine if threes are present or not. 
clinical examination to determine if all C's are present or not. C's are deciduous canine. I don't have to look out for the deciduous canines because uh, I'm more bothered about the permanent canines at the present moment. Uh, here, see, I did mention that uh, my first thing would be to take an OPG. But before that, I did mention that if I don't find the bulges of the canines, I would go for OPG. So to see the bulges of the canine here, I would have to do clinical examination first. So first step would be clinical examination. And once I'm sure that I cannot feel the bulge out here by palpating it, pressing it both buccally and palatally, I would say let's take an OPG. So I, I would say in case this option wasn't present, then I would have said radiographical examination. I would not have gone with CBCT. CBCT becomes an advanced radiological examination. See, I'll tell you something. Mark these two words, location and position. When I want to locate something, I'll take an OPG. But if I want to find its exact position, buccal, lingual, mesial, distal, or horizontal, vertical, in which angulation, then I will take CBCT. CBCT also cannot be done of the entire jaw. Do you know what a CBCT is? You always take a section of a particular area. You never tell the patient, go get a CBCT of your mouth done. No. The technician will always ask you, doctor, which area you want me to take the scan off? So you'll have to tell him, you know, upper left quadrant, upper right quadrant, or you may have to be even more precise and tell him, you know what I want of this tooth particularly, the CBCT. So, uh, when you have to assess two teeth which are on different quadrants, you cannot just directly say, go get a CBCT. To just check the location. Exact position when you're about to do the surgery, just before that, if you make CBCT, it's understandable. Also, CBCT is very expensive. Not all the clinics can afford to have that machine and not all the patients can afford to get it done. But OPG is a very, very basic diagnostic method uh, to check things regards to their location understood so these two words are very important location and position so anyways uh, we we are done with the sub question uh, we would first check the clinical examination don't consider you seeing this picture as the basis that you have already done clinical examination this is the picture given for the reference purpose it will also be given to you in the exam but just looking at this picture doesn't mean that you have done your clinical examination. You still have to palpate. You still have to, you know, see through uh, all the areas which are not visible in this picture. So clinical examination would, of course, first come first. And then only you will uh, take consent of the patient and advise them to go for a radiological examination for further investigations. So the first investigation would always be clinical. If that option is there, that option is not there, then radiographical examination. Now, what do you use to assess accurately the location of unerupted threes? What did we just discuss? The two important words, location and position. So, since they have said, what would you take? What, what assessment would you do to locate location of the unerupted threes? Here, they are meaning both the canines. Now, I know the best investigation for the exact position is CBCT, but that is not what the question is asking. The question is asking they want to locate both the canines together, which is not doable on CBCT. It has to be done on an OPG. So do not jump like this candidate, whoever it is, has marked CBCT. It's a wrong answer. You understanding the difference of what I've just explained? The answer has to be OPG. Okay, if OPG was not the option, then I would have gone with the parallel technique, the slop technique, that is two IOPAs and one occlusal, something like this. Understood? At the last, if I wouldn't have any good option, then probably I would have gone with CBCT, but that is a very low option in the current hierarchy of my options. So the question is asking, you want to locate the, uh, the the areas where both the threes are present they are not asking the exact position of the tooth if this question would have been which is the best diagnostic method 
or which is the best investigation you would do to point out the precise positioning of say one three then i would have chosen this answer because i want to know its buckle or its palatal because opg will give me a general idea because it's a two plane picture but cbcd is a three dimensional picture on opg i can probably see that it's located you know somewhere about say above two two example but i wouldn't know if it's buckle or if it's palatal that i would need further exact positioning and for that i would use cbct so here the answer is opg i hope that is clear now what is the cause of the spaces between her teeth so like we discussed uh, mesiodens can also be an answer but uh, since we don't have the x-ray and we don't know if there are supinimary teeth present i have to go with big jaw and small size teeth uh, there is no missing teeth at the moment because all teeth are present and though upper canines are missing but the desi canines are still present ugly duckling could have been the answer had the patient been between the age of 8 to 9 or 9 to 10 years but since she's 15 that is no longer my answer what could be the abnormality here so this is the opg given now you have done the investigation uh you see this canines uh the position of this canine should have been right above this desi canine but instead it's completely mesially tilted with the root going distally so is here so they are technically about the centrals or the laterals now this is what the opg provides okay this is the location that the centrals are present they are not missing but they are present in a different position now i don't know if this is buccal or palatal correct now to get that exact positioning i need cbct so so what is the question here what could be the abnormality here canine uninterrupted and displaced palatally Mm, okay, I can think of it. Normal teeth eruption? No, this is not normal teeth eruption. Retained upper primary canine? Uh, well, that is an issue, but because of it, this has happened. We don't know. So I'm, I'm I will still keep reading. The girl has a developmental syndrome causing the condition. Well, it's not mentioned in the question, so I'm not going to go with that. Small upper arch small upper arch um no it's a big upper arch so i eliminate this option i eliminate this option i can think about this option normal teeth eruption is not an option so i'll be stuck between a and c if i'm confused uh there there, there are retained upper primary canine yes but because of the retained canine uh this happens no because not all retained canines lead always to this so now i'm left with this option canine unadopted and displaced palatally so if this scenario was not related and somebody else would have just come with this opg and showed me doctor what do you think about it then i would have immediately said you know what the canines are not erupted in this opg and they they look displaced buccal or palatal i'm not aware but since out of all this a b c d e options a option sounds good i'm going to go with that as an answer Instead of palatally, even if they would have said it's buckly, I would have still uh, chosen that answer. So, uh, it's okay if you were not uh, having a specific answer for this question. You see how we eliminated the other options to come to the right answer. Now, what management option is there for Diane's unerupted threes? As Diane is a highly motivated patient with a high standard of general dental care now why is this line important she is highly motivated means half the job is done she'll be very cooperative high standard of general dental care means oral hygiene is good meaning whatever complicated procedure you wish to do at least the oral hygiene part would be taken care of so there is high standard of general dental care and the roots of c's are resolving with the threes in reasonably favorable position so assuming you have done the cbct and you think the position is favorable and the opg also shows you a favorable position see this opg is what i could find in the exam you may have a little different opg so look towards that properly i cannot get the exam opg because i don't have their question back right of the opgs so uh this is but near about the same so anyway so basically uh, the question is saying that everything looks favorable 
uh, and the patient is also highly motivated and she is willing to take a good care so so what are you going to do first option remove c's sensible option now say i remove c's uh, would the canines come in their own position by themselves mm, not likely going to happen retain c's and observe well that is a very horrible option because that's not going to help us in any way remove upper 3 oops why would i remove the canines no they are in a favorable position i can position them properly i would never remove them that's a very aggressive thing and why do you need to do that then transplant upper 3 where why no surgical exposure of 3 is an orthodontic alignment yes that that sounds about good and the ideal option should have been surgical uh, so remove C's and then surgical exposure of threes in orthodontic alignment. That would have been the best. So if there was an option saying A and D, I would have chosen that. If this was combined with this, I would have chosen that. Since it's not there, then the best option is this because the patient is anyways motivated. So yeah, I will choose this as an answer. So that's about it. What are the questions? Okay, uh, now this uh, kind of scenario is also there in part two. since a lot of people are asking me what kind of scenarios you have you you will have uh, i'm sorry <laughs> sorry i sneezed uh yeah so you will have uh, one of the scenarios in your adc part 2 exam once you are going to appear for it an opg like this would be given to you and uh, you would say that the father has come with the daughter and the daughter is very very concerned or the father is very concerned about the absence of the permanent canines and uh, how would you manage this patient and that would be most probably either in your diagnosis and management cluster or in your clinical treatment planning cluster so uh, either of the scenarios will have to explain to the father that uh, you know they'll give the clinical picture that investigations has to be done and based on that investigations the result has to be seen and then an orthodontic referral would be required and so and so forth the treatment would be done so this is how you would be managing that case like you'll have to give the list of all the investigations and uh, what findings can you expect or probably you will have this opg in the exam and then you have to say okay these are your options you can remove the c's and orthodontically position the canines or uh, you know if you want you can wait and watch for more time if you would like or let's have an orthodontic consultation or in the meanwhile if you don't want orthodontic treatment just let's remove the canines and see what happens or take cbct something like this you know they'll they'll give a detailed scenario so yeah this topic becomes important is my point as it is it is definitely going to be asked in part 1 and there is a scenario in part 2 which can be asked to you so i hope this was clear and this helps you out thank you